What's up people, it's DevSage here, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you about polyfills in JavaScript. So what is a polyfill? A polyfill is a piece of JavaScript code that is used to provide or fill in some functionality that one browser might support, but another browser might not support. So let's take a look for a second at the MDN web docs. This is Mozilla's uh, documentation for web technologies. And this is the doc page for arrow functions. Uh, you might be familiar with JavaScript arrow functions already. They're basically just JavaScript's shorthand for functions. Uh, but you may not know that all browsers don't necessarily support arrow functions in the same way. So if we go to this uh, browser compatibility link here, we're brought to this table of browsers and their support for arrow functions. Uh, you can see that arrow functions are largely supported by most browsers except for IE. Internet Explorer does not natively support arrow functions. So let's take a look at another page. So if we go over here to the promise documentation, of course, if you're dealing with asynchronous JavaScript, you've probably encountered promises. Uh, let's take a look at its browser compatibility. As you can see, promises are also largely supported by a lot of browsers, except here's IE. It's not natively supported by Internet Explorer. So where polyfills come into this is a developer might write a piece of polyfill code in order to fill the gap here for IE. So it's a, it, it won't be the original promise implementation, but it'll be a piece of code that can basically simulate the promise behavior in order for IE to support it and to understand it. So now that we kind of got an idea of what a polyfill is, let's uh, go and write our own polyfill. So let's open up our editor and we're going to be writing a polyfill for the for each array method. So uh, let's uh, let's get some some code here. So let's create an array. So let's say const r equals array of one to five, and let's see what the original implementation of for each looks like. So let's say r dot for each. For each takes in a callback function, which has a value parameter, and in this callback function, let's print out two times the original value in the array. So let's say console log val times two. Let's save that and let's run it. As you can see, we have two, four, six, eight, ten. So for each takes in a callback function, calls that callback function for each element in the array and just does whatever that is. Simple enough. So let's pretend that we didn't have support for for each. Uh, so let's let's kind of simulate that. So let's let's say array dot prototype dot for each equals no. So this is basically just erasing for each from the array prototype. So we're effectively eliminating the support for for each. So what I mean is, let's say I ran this again. We get an error, r.foreach is not a function. So this is basically just erasing the for each method from the array prototype. So let's say, let's add a comment here. So simulate browser incompatibility. So yeah, so normally, you know, for each is actually supported by all browsers and doesn't need to be polyfilled at all. <laughs> but this is just for testing and demonstration purposes. So now that we kind of simulated browser incompatibility for for each, we need to write our own polyfill for it. So how do we do that? So let's go down here. The first thing you're going to want to do when you're writing a polyfill for something 
is you need to check for compatibility in the first place. So we might write something like if array dot prototype dot for each. And then inside of here, or I'm sorry, if not array dot prototype dot for each, then we have our polyfill code. So this is checking, does the array prototype chain contain the for each method? If it doesn't, then this browser doesn't support it and it needs to be polyfilled. If it already has the for each support, then this just gets skipped over and your, the rest of your code runs like normal. So in this case, we, are, we, we don't have support because we're kind of simulating that here. So we need to polyfill it. So what does that look like? So basically we need to set array dot prototype dot for each to equal some function. So this is our new for each polyfill. This is our polyfill for the for each method. So I guess this is a good time to point out that whenever you're going to polyfill something, you're going to need to have some kind of intimate understanding of the internals of whatever you're trying to polyfill. So for example, we need to actually know what for each is doing under the hood. In this case, it's kind of simple to see, like I explained, for each takes in a callback function. So I guess we can go ahead and add that part in. So let's say callback function uh, as a parameter here to this function. So this is the callback function that for each takes in. And what for each does is it calls this callback for each of the elements in the original array. So how do we get access to this original array here? So what we can do is we can use, we can just call this. So this is actually a reference to the original array that you're calling for each on. So what do we need to do with this? We, like we said, we need to loop through all the elements in this array and then call the callback function passing in that value. So we can actually use a regular for loop for this. So we can say something like uh, for let val of this, which represents the original array. And then we need to call the callback function that we passed in. So remember, this is just a, this is a function signature that we're passing in, kind of how, how we're doing here. This is what this maps to. But this can actually be called here. And we can pass in val. And then that way, we're going to loop through all the elements in the array and apply that callback function, whatever it is, to that value. So let's, uh, let's go back and let's run this again. So let's see what it does. And boom, you can see that we have two, four, six, eight, ten. We've created a very, very rough polyfill for the for each method. Um, so kind of going back starting from the top we have our array here our original array then on line four we have our array dot prototype dot for each equals null this is basically erasing the support for for each and then on line six is where we actually have our official i guess polyfill check if for each is not supported then we need to polyfill it. So we do that by setting array.prototype.for each equals some function. And this is where the actual specifics of the thing you're trying to polyfill come in. So we know that for each takes in a callback function like we have here. And that callback function is applied to every element in the array. So we loop through all the elements in the original array, this, and we call that callback function with that value. And this is our polyfill. So hopefully by now you have a better understanding of what a polyfill is, 
Polyfill is a piece of code that is used to fill in support for browsers that may not support some piece of functionality. I hope that makes sense. Uh, if you like this video, leave a like, subscribe if you want more content. Uh, but other than that, peace.